If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an excess supply of test strips and lances. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, joining me right now, and I apologize for my voice, ladies and gentlemen. It seems everyone's getting a little bit sick in New England these days, but this gentleman is back in the octagon, UFC Nashville, March 23rd, taking on the debuting Ryan McDonald. We got El Guapo, Chris Gutierrez here. Chris, how are you, man? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. So we're a little over a week away. The UFC is taking over Music City, USA. You get back in the octagon. How are you feeling as we're a little under nine days away? I feel good, man. I mean, I feel I feel as ready as ever. Um, I'm just excited. I'm excited. I'm just ready to get this weight off and uh, make weight, eat, and then whoop ass, man. So you made your UFC debut back in November against Rioni Barcelos at the at the tough finale. It didn't go your way, but you know it was your first time competing in the octagon, and I'm sure you learned a lot from that experience. What kinds of things did you take away from that night in your UFC debut? Um, mostly, man, it was a mental thing. You know, I'm going through a really bad uh, custody battle, and um, you know that that ate away at me uh, during my, you know, during the whole week of the fight. I was, you know, trying to be professional and, and trying to be uh, strong about it and uh, put it aside. But I'm only human, man, and, and my son means everything to me. And uh, even though it may be insignificant to others, to me, it's a big significant thing in my life. And, uh, you know, it, it, it cost me. It made me very emotional for the fight. I just broke down mentally before the fight. And I basically defeated myself, not taking nothing from uh, Honey Barcelos. Um, a tremendous athlete, you know, and it was an honor to share the cage with him. And, uh, you know, I'd love to do it again, but I know I got to work my way back up. And I get another opportunity to uh, to pursue my dream, and that's what I'm, I'm thankful for, and I'm blessed for that. Yeah, I, I had read that interview with Alexander Lee on MMA Fighting, um, you know, how much your son motivates you, how much your family motivates you, and, you know, all, also how much your team at Factory X has, has given you these really positive vibes and a lot of support. And we talk about how fighting and competing helps you grow and how stronger it makes you. And I can't imagine how this process has been for you, but what has all of this taught you, everything you've gone through, going to Factory X and kind of having those positive vibes? What has that taught you about yourself as a person? Man, I'm glad you asked that. I'm, I'm really glad you've asked that. You know what it's taught me? It's taught me how strong I am, how, how much resilience I have as a person, and how much I can overcome. I didn't know. I knew I was a strong person. I was always strong-willed. I just never knew exactly to the extent of how strong. Man, I've, I, I hit rock bottom a couple months back, and, and a lot of people don't know exactly what that means. I'll let your imagination kind of take over at that point. And whatever you, you picture in your mind, it probably happened as far as, you know, what rock bottom means. And, uh, you know, I was at a very low low place in life. And uh, I had uh, my team and my family, and uh, they encouraged me. And, and man, I my faith with God got a lot stronger as well. And I'm happy. I'm happy because I, I came out of that dark spot. And... Um, you know, with the help of, of my close family and friends at Factory X, and, and man, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for that. So it's made me a stronger person uh, mentally and, and physically, you know, but more, more mentally. Is I, now I know how stronger I am. And my relationship with God, man, that, that's that's the, the best one, is that I'm, I'm now closer with, with God. We're not going to get into any details about the rock bottom or anything like that, but do you remember the moment for you when you started climbing out of that place? Was there a certain conversation you had? Was, you know, a certain pep talk? Was it a day of training? You know, what specifically kind of brought you at least one step out of that dark place to kind of get you where you're at right now? Um, it, how do I say it without saying what happened? I, uh, I was facing, I, I believe it was a year in prison. Um, and the day before, I, I kind of accepted it. And I was like, you know, like, you know, I was going to trial for it. You know, like the, the pre-trial of it. And all over something, I had no control over. I have no control of where I'm going to be 15 minutes down the road, you know. 
and I just ended up in the wrong place, wrong time, and got in trouble uh, due to some circumstances. And uh, so I was facing, I think it was a year and a half, they were trying to give me the maximum for it. And uh, during the pretrial, I was like, I had lost faith with God. I, I was like, you know what? Any bad name you can think of, I called I called God. I didn't believe in him. And uh, something just told me, man, like, you know, I called my mom the, the day after, the day before. She was like, keep your faith, keep your faith, and, and God always loves you. And just, you know, just talking to my, my, my people. And what happened was that very next day I was going to court. I just had this, like, warm feeling inside. And I remember the day before I said, if you're really real, you'll show me your love. Because as of right now, I don't believe in you at all. And so I accepted what was coming to me, you know? And man, I'll tell you what, when when I went into the courthouse, my lawyer even said, you look good. You have this glow to you. And I was like, I don't know why, but I feel great. And it was the weirdest thing ever, man. But that was kind of the turning point where God was like, you may have lost faith in me, but I'm going to show you how much love I have for you. And, and I'll never turn my back on you. And he did, man. And it's, it's just been blessings after blessings after blessings. That was the first blessing. And, and there's just been numerous things. There's just been like little little things that make a big difference. And he's just proven himself to me, man. And, and I'm thankful for that. I'll, I'll, I'll always be grateful, you know. That's incredible. Of course, your teammate at Factory X, Ian Heinish, has what a story he's had in his life. And he's kind of talked about some of the similar things that he's gone to a, a little, some of the things he's gone through is, is just unbelievable. I mean, just read that player's tribune article and you can learn more about it, but he seemed to find himself in a great place. He's fighting Tom Breeze in a couple of days. Now, have you leaned on Ian at all and, and talked to him about some of these things that you're going through? Do you, do you work with him on this stuff? Of course. Yeah. And, and you know, what's funny is uh, coach Mark, our head, my head coach and, and also Ian's head coach, he actually was telling me, you know, to to having a relationship with God is a two-way street. You know, it's just it's not just you seeking Him whenever things are going bad. You got to seek Him when things are going good too. And I, and I think that was a, a a flaw of mine. Is and of course with a lot of people we just lose track and and we just don't seek Him on our good days when we seek Him on our bad days. And so he got me to go to church. Uh, at Red Rocks here in Colorado and then Ian also reached out to me and was like hey man you know start coming to this church it's right down the road from my house you know and it was just you know they, they built a brand new one right down the road from my house I was like yeah I, I'd be it's everything's here you know like everything's good so I've been doing that and yeah me and Ian man we chop it up all the time and he knows about my problems and and I know about his and, and you know he's a good friend of mine man he's a really good mentor I look up to him. He probably don't know that, but I do. You know, this is this is my first time interviewing you, but there is that glow to you. I can see it. You know, you, you look like you're in a, in a really good place right now. So let's talk about that feeling heading into the fight next weekend. You were scheduled to face Martin Day. He had to withdraw. Now you get Ryan McDonald, a newcomer to the UFC. He's 10-0. When you get the call that Martin's out, you're fighting a guy named Ryan McDonald. When you got the name, did you know much about Ryan? Uh, I, I mean, I had a couple, I had a couple of friends who, uh, who were supposed to fight him and, uh, turns out he dropped, he, he didn't want to fight them and he didn't want to fight them. And a little birdie told me that, uh, he don't, he don't want to take tough fights until he gets to the UFC. So, you know, you, it is what it is. I call it how I see it. I think he's fought easy opponents. Um, and no disrespect to his opponents, uh, but you know uh, he's fighting people who are five and five, you know six and eight, you know fighting people like that. And you know what? He got his he got his he got his wish. He wants to fight a tough opponent into the UFC. Well, I'm a welcome. Him. You know the change of opponent, and you're with Mark Montoya, who we talked about in the in the masterminds over at Factory X with. You know, Jim, with so much knowledge, experience, so much talent in one room. Was there any sort of drastic change or anything when it came to your camp? Like, I know it wasn't like the opponent change happened on three days' notice, but did anything have to change at all in terms of your approach to the fight next weekend? No. No. No, no, no. Just eh, just one little thing. But but that's 
that's the easy part. It's, it's the fun part. Part. And um, you know, I'm really good at I'm really good at um, what's it called like um, uh, like molding to the fight. I'm really good at, at catching on to what what they're doing and and, and switch in, in mid fight. And um, you know, so for the fight, it was nothing really much different. Um, I was gonna take it to uh, Martin Day. Now I got a new opponent. I'm gonna welcome uh, Ryan McDonald to the UFC uh, with a rude awakening, you know. And I'm sure he's gonna try to do the same to me. And that's the that's the fun part. <laughs> have you um, have you gotten a chance to to watch any of Ryan's fights? I know you've heard some birdies, kind of telling you different things. If you have, what have you learned about him along the way, or what have those birdies may have told you about how he how he competes in the cage? Ah, uh, we got that's that's the that's the part you gotta wait and see. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, there, there's video, there's video of him. Um, you know, I, I saw his last fight at LFA. I remember watching that fight, and I remember actually watching that fight before my friend fought. And um, you know, it was nothing spectacular. I was just like, oh, here's some here's some bantam weights, and yeah, he was like nine and zero at the time, and I was like, oh, okay, this guy's got a pretty good record. But I watched the fight and I was like, I, I'd, I'd dust him if I ever fought him. I legit was like, I would, I would dust him, you know, or the other guy. And and unfortunately, you know, Ryan, you know, good for him. He got the submission. But um, it's going to take more than that uh, with me, you know. Uh, I'm not going to crumble under pressure. I'm not. Man, listen, I, I'm, in a, I'm in a good, I'm in a good. What I worked on for this fight was my mental game. And. Man, it's I'm I'm stronger than ever. Um, I'm happy. I don't know how else to say it. You know, I'm really happy. I'm excited for this fight. I'm just now, um, you know, it's just the the small parts of the game is getting my weight down and um and, and going from there. You know, the 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 game plan is all set. The work has been done. The hours have been put in. I'm ready. We talked about the depth at your gym at Factory X. Who are some of the fighters you've been working with to, to help you get ready for this one? Everybody. Uh, uh, I worked with Yusuf Zalal, uh, Brandon Royville, uh, Markel Maderos. I've worked with Sid uh, Bice, uh, Jordan Tatoni. I worked, man, with a, a lot of different people. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I just came from seeing my son. Uh, I go see my son at a facility. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but... You know, I, I just came from seeing my son, so that's always a, a plus for me. But we had Joe. Um, I also worked with Joe Warren. He was he's actually there today, but I get to work with him tomorrow. He's also going to be there tomorrow. So anytime you have somebody with that caliber of wrestling, and, and drop some knowledge, man, I'm 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 thankful. You know, and I work with incredible strikers as well, wrestlers, jiu-jitsu practitioners. You know, it's man, I'm I'm ready, man. Everybody at Factory X, man, even the we don't have weak links, you know, and man, even our, if we did have one, man, even, even he or she would be a, a force, you know? And so that lets you know, you know, how, how, how in depth the gym is as far as athletes in there. That's amazing that, that you got to see your son. Is, did you get to see him heading into the last fight or is this something that's kind of changed along the way where you get the opportunity to, to see him a little bit more? Um, I didn't, I did not get to see him for my last fight. Um, I actually only see my son twice a week. I, um, of course, as a as a professional fighter, you know, you get accused of things, you know, and, you know, with no proof, how do you back it up? But yet you still get, you still get, uh, what's it called? Um, I guess picked that like, like you may have could have done something. But, you know, that's a, that's a different subject. You know, I, I, I don't mind talking about that later, but as of right now, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Um, it sucks. It definitely sucks that, um, you know, that fighter stigma kind of hindered me a little bit in my case. But um, what they don't understand is I'm fighting on the biggest platform there is in martial arts. And it's it's a dream come true to me. And I, I don't see how they don't see the fact that I am making strides in my, in my life. Look where I've look where I was last year to look where I am now. I'm, I'm mentally a lot stronger. I'm, I'm not only a better uh, person, I'm a better man. You know what I mean? I, and with being a better man, I'm a, I'm a better father. 
I'm a better son. I'm a better brother. I'm a, I'm a better partner in, 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 in my relationship with my girlfriend. Um, I'm a, I'm a, a better student. I, I learn and I, and I seek advice and I have no, no ego with that. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm open. I'm an open book and I'm just, I'm, I'm learning to love and live life again, man. And, and that's, that's what I'm, I'm grateful for. Man, I'm getting all motivated and jacked up listening to you talk right now. I mean, personally, like, like, am I, like where I'm at right now, um, just to kind of give you a, like a little personal thing on me. Um, so I just moved to the other side of the state of Massachusetts and it's almost for like the same reason that like, I mean, it's, it's not the UFC, but obviously like opportunity knocked, I had to make the move. The problem is, um, I have a son myself, he's in school, so he can't make the move with me for months. So like, uh, I, I get to see him like as much as I can, but like, I don't get to see him every day. If I'm lucky, I get him for like, I get to see him for like a day and a half every single week. So I understand what, like, I understand, you know, what that's like to not be able to see your kid every single day. Like luckily technology is, is, uh, way better than it was 15, 20 years ago. Exactly. Um, but man, like I, I, like I'm getting chills just kind of like talking to you about this, but you know, kind of going back to the fight itself, because you seem the, the growth that you're telling me about, you know, where you've come over the last, you know, year, several months has been amazing. And you seem to be like in a very reflective state right now. You know, you take time, you, you don't take anything for granted. It sounds like, you know, you're exactly. really reflecting on things that are going on with you. And at times I'm sure you're reflecting on the fight. You know, you close your eyes, the fight's kind of playing out in your mind, certain moments, things that you're probably going to do in the octagon are coming to your head. How do you see this fight playing out in your mind in Nashville next weekend? You know, I, I've never really like called, um, never been the person to kind of call what I'm going to do because I just, whatever they give me, I try to take, you know what I mean? And I wish I had that kind of luck where I could just call it and do it. <laughs> but you know, I, I have a feeling I, I'm not going to need the judges. You know, I, 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 and my hand will be raised. That's no doubt about it. Okay. That's no, no mistake about that. How submission, knockout, TKO, whatever. But I have a feeling we're not going to need the refs. I mean, we're not going to need the judges, <laughs> so it's gonna it's gonna be exciting. I'm excited, man. I I'm getting pumped just thinking about it, and so man, you know it, it is what it is. I'm I'm like I said, I'm pumped. But like I said, man, I everything you said is true. I I'm in a reflective state, man. And I don't take things for granted, and and I have another opportunity to uh, pursue my dream and, and and try to change my life, and I'm going to take full advantage. I'd be damned if I let somebody else take it from me. I've I've already had. I've already had somebody take something from mine and I can't do nothing about it, but I can do something about March 23rd. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have some control there. Um, yeah. You know, Bantamweight has become really interesting over the last year. You know, the flyweight division seems to have like a little bit of life left, but for the most part, a lot of those fighters are jumping up to 35. Of course, the top of the division is absolute craziness right now, but I feel like at Bantamweight, now's like the right time. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's so many opportunities. Do you agree with that? Like, what's your take on the state of the division right now? But yeah, yeah, I, I agree. The Bantamweight is an exciting division. It's always been, but I think now it's like, it's been put on the map now. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, all right, like these guys are also good. You know what I mean? Like, they're not just pitter patter and, and, and just running around. You know, there's knockouts or submissions, you know, they, and it's exciting. But, like I said, I think, I think, you know, I think the, the Conor McGregor kind of phase kind of helped bring some of the attention to the smaller weight classes. Because at 45, he, I mean, 35 is right under that. So he kind of like helped bring people towards the lower, lower division. Now that guy's crazy. He's throwing dollars <laughs> to buses and beating up, you know, people who are recording him walking down the street or something. I don't know. Hey, I, I, I guess money changes you, you know. I, damn, that's crazy, but. I'm excited, man, for what the future holds for me, and uh, I'm pumped, man. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Chris Gutierrez takes on Ryan McDonald next Saturday in Nashville, Tennessee. The fight and the card will air on ESPN+. Plus. How excited are you to, to be a part of this relationship between the UFC and, and ESPN? I mean, this is pretty cool stuff, right? It is. Like I said, man, I, I, I'm learning to love the process and everything that comes with it, um, and I that's something I take from my last fight. I was just so worried about, let's get it done. Let's get it over with. 
And when it finally was over and I lost, I was like, I don't like that. I don't like that. I didn't enjoy nothing. You know, if you're not going to enjoy it, why do it? So I, I got, I had to work on me, of course, because that's where it all starts with me. And I fixed some stuff and I'm enjoying it now. And, and like you said, man, now it's a ESPN plus thing now. So I'm excited, man. And I've never been in Nashville. And so, man, you get to travel the world and, and live your dream. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm blessed. What, why, what do I have to worry about? What do I have to be upset about? You know what I mean? And you're with the right coach in terms of enjoying the process. That's like his, his moniker and his MO is like, let's just enjoy it. it. Let's just enjoy the process. I talked to him a couple weeks ago and he's, uh, he's a, a great, he's a great man. He, he's a great, he's a great individual. He's got a good heart. I tell coach Mark all the time. Coach Mark is a blessing in disguise for me. I think he's an angel of mine. I really think, I really think I was brought, we, we were brought together for a reason and he's kind of like took me under his wing. And, and I really feel that not just saying it because I just feel the connections there. You can go to any gym. Uh, you know, I could be at this gym and it not be a good fit, but I feel, I, I feel at home most importantly. And, and that's what makes me, it, it feels good. You know what I mean? Is he- I feel safe. Everything is good. Is Mark Montoya the busiest man in America right now? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he is so busy, but man, that man, I, you know, he, he, they're, man, they're, they're blessed. And, and, and you know what? His wife and kids don't get the respect they deserve. They are tre- tremendous, man. They are, they're all blessings, man. They're all blessings. And, and I, I'm thankful to be a part of their family. They're, they're amazing individuals. They're all big hearted, lovable, loving people. Chris, I appreciate everything, man. I appreciate opening up and, and talking about things that probably weren't comfortable. And I didn't, you know, really mean for it to go in that direction. But honestly, I'm, I'm glad that it did because I, I think you're going to inspire a lot of people with what we talked about today. But before we get out of here, you know, let the folks know where to find and follow you on the web, social media, shout outs, any sponsors you want to call out, all that good stuff. Please take the floor, my man. Uh, appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can find me on, on the internet, um, social media on uh, Instagram at El Guapo MMA, uh, other forms, Chris, Chris Gutierrez, Chris El Guapo Gutierrez. I do want to thank my gym, Factory X, of course, my management team, Iridium Sports Agency, all my sponsors, Denver Chiropractor, uh, Damage Control Mouth Guard, uh, Virus, uh, Scott Cornell's Attorney of Law in Texas, and um, man, I'm just bombarded right now. <laughs> um, if, if, if I miss you, I'm sorry. Love you guys. You guys make it all possible for, uh, you know, for everything behind behind the scenes you know uh, i do want to say thank you to a, a friend uh jordan kurtz with uh comments from the peanut gallery uh he does really good at the videos and stuff thank you my man uh, other than that man um love and peace man i love everybody man let's get it thanks chris all the best to you next weekend really appreciate the time yes sir brother thank you yeah.